Biden comes in who knows nothing, the guy that's driven up the cost of fuel, driven up the cost of food, driven up the cost of utility bills, driven up the cost of automobiles, driven up the cost of everything. He now is telling you we're going to reduce the cost of pharmaceuticals. The rarer the disease, the less likely that people can get medicine or there's going to be development for them in the future. With Joe Biden's announcement that he's capping um, the price of some very significant drugs that save millions of people every year around the world. When you cap the price of something, you get less of it. What happens? Well, let's say we cap the price of food. You think we'll get more food? Let's say we cap the price that a farmer can get for wheat. You think he'll grow more wheat? You think he'll get more wheat? When you cap prices, it sounds great politically. You get a lot of votes, and then people one day, they go to the pharmacy and they say, where's my drug? Well, we don't have it. Or it's gonna take three weeks to get it. And the rarer your disease, the less likely you're ever gonna have a new drug. Now, how do we know that? The National Health Service in Britain, in order to save money because it's such a bureaucratic disaster, where they spend a fortune and they get very little for it comparatively, certainly compared to the United States. They start with the most rare diseases, that is, that affect the least number of people, and they chop them off. They exclude them. They exclude them. They exclude them. So decisions are made about life and death. In our country, because the private sector mostly, the pharmaceutical companies, they don't work that way. If they can get money back to cover their investment, which can take 20 years to find uh, some kind of, a, not a magic drug or a pill or something, a treatment, in which they might spend five or $10 billion until they see anything and they may see nothing. Uh, they're not gonna do it. Look at Alzheimer's. Over $20 billion has been spent by private sector pharmaceutical companies trying to find some kind of cure or even some kind of maintenance of Alzheimer's. They might be close, but they might not be. And it's a rigorous process, these trial processes. The FDA, it's not like it's, you know, one of these uh, pandemic COVID-19 vaccines that they get out in three weeks. You may not get approval for 10 years. And so the costs go through the roof. Uh, some of it legit, some of it not legit as a result of the government. Now, can you imagine saying, you know what, whatever Alzheimer's drug you come up with, we're capping it at such and so price so more people can afford it. How can you afford something that's not available? The other thing it does is you're a company, you're sitting there, now what is a company? They have shareholders. If they're making so much money, then take your pension money and invest it in the company. You, have, you can get a piece of the action too. It's not how it works. The problem is people want something for nothing. People want something for nothing. And these pharmaceutical companies, they also have these programs, every one of them, and they spend almost $20 billion a year. If you can really demonstrate that you can't afford a drug, you don't even have to be, you know, living on the streets. If you can really demonstrate that you can't afford a particularly expensive drug, and you have a doctor sign off, they have these forms for it and so forth. I've seen it. The last time we had this debate with Obamacare, I got the forms. I looked at the forms. I spoke to the doctors. We talked about this on radio. You can get the drug for nothing. And they put that aside in their cost-benefit analysis. So people who really cannot afford something typically can get it anyway. So none of this is discussed. So Biden comes in who knows nothing, the guy that's driven up the cost of fuel, driven up the cost of food, driven up the cost of utility bills, driven up the cost of automobiles, driven up the cost of everything. He now is telling you we're going to reduce the cost of pharmaceuticals. Even so-called populist conservatives, which is sort of oxymoronic, say the same thing. I see them on TV. Big Pharma, Big Pharma. Now, why do they call them Big Pharma? So you hate them. No, it's big government. It's not big meat. It's not big baby formula. It's not big, no, it's not big oil. It's big government. You cap the price of oil, you'll get less oil. You cap the price of food, you'll starve to death. 
And by the way, if the government was in charge of feeding us, we would starve to death. So it's important to remember these things. And they snuck it into this inflation, so-called inflation reduction bill, like they snuck in all the climate change stuff and so forth. These companies are not yet owned by the government. And so they talk about Medicare and Medicaid negotiating with these companies. And as was pointed out by one of the CEOs of these companies the other day, they don't negotiate. That's not a term that's used properly. Here's what it is. You either price this drug at the price we say, or we're going to fine you such a horrific amount of money that it'll be in your benefit to price it the way we tell you to price it. Is that a negotiation? So you know what the company is going to do? They're going to stop. We're going to have brownouts and blackouts in this country. We're going to have food shortages in this country because everything relies on fuel, including fertilizer and so forth. You already see what's happening in the more blue Democrat areas. You see what's happening in New York on immigration now. These are areas the government is supposed to be able to manage. You see the price of food already? Wait until you go to the pharmacy. And they say, I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. I'm sorry, Mrs. Abdullah. We can't get you that drug. Or we can't get that drug anymore. Or they're not producing that drug anymore. What are you going to do then? Oh, you'll bl blame Big Pharma. No, you blame the government, Democrat Party, and Biden. This is a disaster waiting to happen. It absolutely is a disaster waiting to happen. Um, one of the dr drugs is a, a blood thinner that I use, as a matter of fact, for people who have heart issues and stroke issues and all the rest of it. The average payment every month is 45 to $55. What's that come to? Dollar and a half a day? Okay, they're capping them. Why? Because that's how they get the most votes. They're looking at these drugs and they're figuring out how many people take them. Three million people in the United States take that drug. Three million. It was developed in 1995 and it wasn't approved till 2012. Okay? That's a long time. And it replaced warfarin, which was a notoriously difficult drug to, to use. If you use too little, it's an effect. If you use too much, you can cause uh, internal bleeding. And so you needed constant blood work and monitoring by doctors. And so it was replaced, and this new drug, which has various names, you know, depending on how they market it, um, you don't even have to track it. You don't even have to have blood work. It's a perfect drug. It's a blood thinner. Millions of Americans are on blood thinners. So they don't get heart attacks. They don't have clogging going on. They don't get these strokes and so forth and so on. Well, that's one of the drugs he's capping. It's one of the drugs he's capping at, 45 to $55 a month. And they're doing it because Medicare and Medicaid control about 35 to 40% of the market. Because senior citizens use medical care and drugs, you know, far more than any other part of the population from an age perspective. For obvious reasons, you're getting older and your health deteriorates slowly, some people quickly. And in order to save money, Medicare and Medicaid are going broke because of the way the government runs them. So they're squeezing doctors, they're squeezing hospitals, and now they're going to squeeze, squeeze pharmaceutical companies. You're going to wind up with a second or third class medical care system where everybody will have access, but the question is access to what? And again, this is a European-style economic socialism, and this is being done through the back door. It's the same with the government stepping in now and saying, literally, people are figuring out, they're looking at in the government, what equipment do you have in your house? What appliances do you have in your house? They're going through each one. Dishwashers, washing machines, dryers, HVAC system, window air conditioning units, ceiling fans, light bulbs, every single thing they're looking at. And under the rubric of climate change, they're driving up the cost of every single one of them. And through regulations, they're effectively outlawing what you currently have. 
this is no way to run an economy. This is no way to run an economic system. We got prosperity. We have all these beautiful things, these technologies, these medicines, abundance of food and all the rest, or at least we've had, because of the private sector. The government steps in. We're going to starve to death. We're going to freeze to death in the winter. We're going to sweat to death in the summer. They can't manage forests. They can't manage the border. They really don't want to. They can't manage the currency and inflation. What the hell can they manage? And yet, they're ubiquitous. They grab everything they can. We're supposed to be a limited federal government. This is a limitless federal government. Want to see more? Sign up for Levin TV.